The thing I like about painting, it's really an arcane art form now. Because I work in technology, I like hobbies that technology doesn't necessarily have to center in them. I thought, okay, I'm you know, losing my vision and maybe I'll try to learn how to play music. Uh, unfortunately, as much as I love music, I don't have the talent. I couldn't adapt to, I would, could not adapt to learning guitar as hard as I tried. Uh, and I said, okay, uh, I'm gonna continue to paint, maybe get more textural. Working as a design researcher, you're focusing on engineering and uh, in a systems approach to looking at things, but you're also putting the human being and their psychological capabilities into it. But then there's another part of that that also is considering the, the design aspects of it. I'm Sanjay Batra. I'm a staff user experience researcher for Google. I lead research on Google hardware products. I have a wonderful team there that uh, uh, is, is very polite and lets me lead them. <laughs> I'm Colvinder Aurora, I go by K. I'm an aspiring writer, so I'm writing a novel about an experience that Sanjay and I share, which is growing up immigrants in the United States. My creative process is very different than Sanjay's. Sanjay reminds me to slow down a little and enjoy the process. In the summer of 2000, I was working in a consulting company with a lot of uh, designers and I used to enjoy doing art. And I said, well, maybe I'll take some art classes. So I took a drawing class. My teacher said, oh, you, you tend to block pastels in and move them around. Maybe you, should, you would like painting. And I'd never thought about painting before. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to continue to paint after the first class I took. But as part of my business, I did a website for a summer uh, art retreat of the School of the Arts Institute called Oxbow. It's in Sagatuck, Michigan. And as part of the payment for doing their website, I got two weeks to take a class there. I really enjoyed the teachers. One was an art historian. The other was a really great painting instructor. The first day, the painting instructor was going, are you going to be able to paint? You're not trained to be a painter and you don't see very well. It's like that. And uh, and then I said, I don't know, I'm gonna give it a try. <laughs> but then within the first few days, he saw a lot of growth and he goes, you've got something to do here. So, um, so I really grew a lot. I couldn't do it perfect in some way anyways, but I could do most methods painting instructors taught me with just practice and just a little extra light. In a studio class, I would bring in extra lighting and put it over my easel. And of course, painting outdoors was just perfect. Starting in uh, 2006, I, re I, I really started realizing that I need to start adjusting my method and I couldn't quite paint certain things in the same way. I, I see a lot of growers and shooters that tend to be very light kind of neon, like yellows and whites and then light greens. And uh, I also see like spectral bands. That painting is called Ocean. It was an abstract one. I only invented to try to show the dynamism of spectral bands and then I then decided at one point to turn it into a kind of more whirlpool. I'm also influenced by an artist called Gerhard Richter in another art class. So he would do these large squeegee paintings with texture and I kind of do that. But in addition, he would project and blow up things out of magazines or newspapers. He would grid out things and then make them really large. I didn't quite make them as large, but then I, so I precisely gridded this out and then painted this painting in a very grayscale thing. And then what I ended up doing is instead of the eyes of this particular gentleman, which ironically happens to be Jerry Yang, the, the one of the founder of Yahoo, I turned it into my self-portrait. He would use grayscaling or limited color palettes, which also appealed to me. This was part of my process a few years ago when I started to paint. I don't see well enough now to look at this, this gridded thing and put it onto a canvas, but with, I'm going to try with this thing. This is a little CCTV camera. 
and you can blow it up, you can decrease it. When I used to see better, it used to help me blow up text, but now I, now I pretty much use all text-to-speech. And... Sorry about that. That's okay, no worries. You were actually talking to me about these headphones earlier. Yeah, do you wanna, do you wanna put them on? Device unlocked, tune in radio, navigate up button, double so, tap to activate. So I use uh, a screen reader on the phone okay. to Pixel launcher. hear what's going Maps. on. Yeah. But Gmail, that's, actions, but, shortcuts but for me and to notifications, do that, remove, move item, double tap to activate, double tap and hold to long press. In speaker mode, in public, it uh, disturbs other people and it's gonna not protect my privacy. So I'm gonna turn these on. So now it's reading all that stuff that used to be going on on this phone as I'm touching into my ears. Besides just helping me in terms of being situationally aware, I can also use them to have a soundtrack as a background in my life. Currently the way in doing my painting process is paint outside in our backyard and that's the wonderful thing about California is that you get lots of natural light a good amount of the year so that's really good for me as I take in less light each year. I have a little setup that I work at to maximize the light and I put it in different spots in the patio based on the time of year <laughs> and uh, Kay will come out and help me select the colors I want to use that day. I'm using probably a lot less maybe two to three colors at a time and then mixing them into other things and uh, I used to use a lot more of a full like rainbow palette since I since I can't kind of read the uh, what's written on the block K just comes out and helps me select things we, we kind of we've kind of pre-organized things into buckets in the little bags that have greens in one, blues in the other, but they sometimes get mixed up, so. He'll call me out when he's happy with what he's accomplished uh, periodically, and I'll give some minor criticism, <laughs> usually positive. I don't want to interfere too much with it. I think he has a process and a way he wants to do it. Sanjay has been using pretty much the same uh, tools. What I've noticed over time is that he sets them up in a particular way uh, so that he can identify what those are. Usually he identifies them by the feel and shape of them, um, but having them laid out in a particular order or a particular part of the table uh, is something I noticed he's doing more of. I tend to use household items for painting instead of palettes and little dainty pieces of equipment that they have for painting. I tend to use like muffin tins and little trays and things like that. Growing up in New York, going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art mm -hmm. and seeing Van Gogh's sunflowers and it always made me really happy. Mm -hmm. And I asked you if you could paint something in that style. Mm -hmm. And do you remember what you said? Uh... I don't, did I, I, I probably was afraid to do it, right? You said no, it's not your style. <laughs> so you interpreted Van Gogh's style in your own way. I thought it was fabulous. That's one of the first paintings that you sold. And then you painted another one, so we would have one of our own. Part of the reason I don't like still lifes is, when you go to an art class, they make you do these still lives of drawings and paintings. And I go, I don't want to do this. When are we going to get to the models? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, uh, uh, so, uh, but, but, but with that, I didn't, I didn't start from a still life or anything. Mm -hmm. I, I started from my, my imagination. And said, okay, and, and I took one of my uh, 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 pieces of pottery that I made and used that as the base, and then I just started drawing the stems coming out of it. And with, with that one, I, I, in nature, I do like twigs and things that are a little decaying, mm. or I, I, I'm, I'm totally obsessed by 
uh, fallen trees or things that are windblown and twisted, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, dead trees and things like that. Because I think those are almost more interesting than life ones. So I, I, I drew in the stems of the Kikulara things and I go, okay, now I've got a bunch of dead sunflowers here. Now how do I, uh, now how do I bring it to life to where uh, Kay would like it? So I, so I took some bright yellow and started fading in and uh, did that and then started putting textural strokes in and then I go, okay, now I think other people might like it <laughs> besides <laughs> me liking it. And I sometimes ask you uh, what you want to achieve based on what I see on the canvas. Do you want this tree to be larger? Do you want the cloud to be um, more fluffy? And uh, once you give me a sense of what you want, I might give some advice on what I think would enhance the painting. And I've noticed that sometimes you take my advice. And sometimes I don't. <laughs> but, 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 but truly, with painting, I sometimes don't take her advice, but in all other aspects, I always take her advice. <laughs> I don't agree. <laughs>